Meet Robert. Robert had been drinking daily for over 30 years. At Robert's peak, he was drinking up to two-fifths of vodka a day, which is 1.5 litres. Health issues, lack of energy, feeling like shit, you name it. After taking some time off work to hike the Appalachian Trail, Robert knew it was time to change. He'd already tried AA, but couldn't buy into the philosophy. He tried stopping alone, but always felt like he was missing out on something. He knew he had to change, but something would always draw him back to the drink. But then, five months ago, Robert had a breakthrough. Robert and I got started working together in the Sober Clear program. He reports that the program has helped him fill in all the missing pieces in the puzzle, and he says not drinking has become a walk in the park. How is that possible? Well, today, Robert is going to share his incredible story and experience to help you on your journey. If you're ready to change your relationship with alcohol and you want to hear a story from a real person with real experiences, make sure to stay tuned and watch this entire video. You do not want to miss this one. Okay, welcome back to the channel. We've got Robert joining us today. So Robert is joining us from Cleveland, Ohio. He's had a sick transformation over the past few months and he has kindly agreed to come on today to share inspiration, to share his story, to really show you all that it's possible for you as well. So, you know, really grateful that you've said yes to this, Robert. I mean, uh, most people that are in the program say, Nope, but you said yes, so you know, yeah. it takes a lot of bravery to put your face out there and share your story, but it's definitely going to impact a lot of people, so really appreciate that. Uh, mm -hmm. And the first question is, Robert, is how long have you not drank for now? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's been about five months or so. Um, I'm not counting. I'm just not drinking. Uh, well, yeah, you did start the program five months ago, but what, just, just quickly, before we go a bit deeper, but why do you say you're not counting? I, I don't, I don't see any point in that. Uh, if you're not drinking any longer, why count the days? It just reminds you that you're not drinking. Just go on with life. That's how I see it. Love it. Well, let, let's start at the beginning. So, hmm. um, yeah, so it's just, you know, do you want to talk about, you know, your history with drinking, where it started and, um, yeah. Well, I'm, I grew up, well, I grew up during my high school years in the Caribbean, where basically you could all drink at any age, it didn't matter. So we would we would get off of school and go to the pizza place and just drink and we'd go out and party and drink in high school. And I, I wouldn't consider myself a problem drinker at that time, but I started drinking heavily then. Uh, moved back to the States at 17, couldn't drink any longer, it was a big culture shock. Um, and, you know, but of course, you drink as a teenager and as an early adult person. And I partied just like everybody else. But I didn't really start drinking heavily until probably around 25 or so, a little, maybe 24, 25. Then, then it became a daily thing. Um, you know, I'll tell you, have you heard of Charles, Charles Bukowski? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I read one of his books once, and uh, he's a big drinker, and he just made it sound so freaking cool and fun. And I just kind of read all of his books, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a drunk just like Charles Bukowski, because he's a genius, you know. Mm. I could be a drunk genius. There you go. And I, that's really when it started. I just kept drinking every single day. Another thing is I, I, would, I lived in Chile for a while. They drink a lot of red wine there. So I just, when I came back, I just started drinking at least a bottle of wine every night, every single night. And that's how I did it. And I did that up until, I don't know, my mid forties, maybe early forties. Then I switched to hard liquor. Then I started um, drinking, you know, whiskey and scotch and tequila. Scotch is my favorite. I love the scotch. Well, and I uh, loved it, but... <laughs> Oh, I I still love it. It's great, but it's uh it's just not necessary any longer. I mean, if I had a glass of scotch right here, I would savor it and I would love it, but I don't need it. Mm -hmm. So, so then it was around the early forties. It went to the the hard liquor. Mm -hmm. Then what started happening? Just in, well, like what was going on in your life? I I kind of went to the hard liquor because. Mm -hmm there's less calories per, per glass. So I could drink, I could drink the same amount. And I started running, I started getting in shape. So I was, I actually lost, lost weight when I started, when I went to the hard liquor. So that was, it was kind of a health reason going to the hard liquor. 
And uh, it worked for a while uh, until it catches up with you, and then it does catch up with you. Um, late, late 40s, 50s, mid 50s, it started catching up pretty good. And I, I decided, you know, I, I need to really stop this. I decided that a lot of times, and uh, it, it it only worked after I kind of got um, the information that you share in your program really put a big light on where I was, why I was, and it really helped me figure out the key for myself to stop drinking. Yeah, so so it was kind of, this has been going on for, for, for years by this point, you know, 30, 30, 40 years, and it just kind of just sounds like it just been ramping, 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 ramping until you just got to a place where it all caught up to you and you're like, uh-oh. Well, I mean... Honestly, the the whole COVID thing was was a big deal to me. I, I was one of those anti vaxxers I didn't take the vax. I lost my job. Um, I kind of took a year off, and I started drinking really, really heavily. Then I gained a lot of weight, and then I um, I kind of I just kind of went downhill. Uh, I I thought the world was going crazy, and it was. And I uh, that's how I dealt with it by drinking more. And uh, I went a little crazy, um, but then. At some point, I made a decision. I'm I'm going to get myself back together. I decided to hike the Appalachian Trail. Can't do a lot of drinking on the trail, so I kind of cut down a lot there. I still drank when I could. When I came back, you know, I felt better. I'd lost a lot of weight, lost 40 pounds um, just hiking. And um, when I came back, I started drinking again. Of course, that's how, that's what you do when you're when you have it available to you. But um, I just, I knew that I needed to stop. I just knew that I needed to find a way to stop. And I had tried, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous. I tried, well, that's the only thing to try. I was like researching, is there some sort of pill that makes you stop wanting to drink? Or I couldn't really find anything that had any credibility. But I knew I had to drink and I just couldn't get it. I just couldn't figure out how to do it. Mm. So, like, what what would you say was going on in your life? Like, what negatives were happening for you to really realize, like, I should probably do something about this? Well, I I had gained a lot of weight. Um, it, it just felt bad. I felt like, you know, there would be episodes on, on really big binge drinking where, you know, my, my ankles and my feet would swell up, and we all know what that means. You're, you're, you're holding water, your liver not processing. And I just felt like my body was falling apart. I felt like I, if I continued down this road, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't be around for that much longer. So I knew I had to do it, and I wanted to do it. Um, I've been wanting to quit drinking for, you know, 20 years, you know. But, and you do, you, you try, you, you come up with some idea, okay, let me set my mind like this, and quit drinking, and it works for a little while, and, and then it comes back. Um, but I, I always was trying to pick a mindset, and I tried lots of different mindsets. Mm. I was trying to pick a mindset that would work, and I tried lots of times to quit drinking. Um, but the, I, that, that final mindset, I just never got to on my own without your program. That's all. Do you mind me asking, what kind of quantity would you usually drink when, it, when you were going... On the heavier side, like what are we talking? Um, like a fifth and a half a day. I like, I guess a fifth is what a liter. Yeah. So I would drink a liter of of scotch, or or two in a day when I was really. I would, I would down like two of those a day when I was really binging. On a normal, you know, working, you know, living my life, I would drink a pint a night. That was, that was my normal. You know, my, my girlfriend didn't like it. I didn't like it. Um, I would fall asleep on the couch, you know, every night. You know, you come home from work, you're all stressed out. You've been, your mind has been, you know, hammered all day. And you're just, you just need to kind of settle down and relax. And uh, that that was my medicine. Mm. So maybe this this could be useful, but like... When you would stop with willpower or AA meetings or whatever, it sounds like you could go. You could you could go a period of time. It wasn't like every single day for your entire life. It sounds like you you would stop. 
Yeah. When you would relapse or go back to drinking, can you remember what that, the conversation was like in your head? Yeah, it's the same time, same one every time. Um, I'll go to the restaurant with my girlfriend. We, there's a Mexican restaurant down here, um, down the road that we like to go to. And they have, uh, what's it, Negro Modelo beer. And, you know, I really love a beer with Mexican food. And I would, every single time, I would tell myself, I can just have a beer, one beer with this dinner, and that's fine. And I can go on with my life. And maybe next weekend, I'll have another beer. Um, invariably, as we all know, that one beer is just the first step in falling back down into the trap. And that's what happened every single motherfucking time. And I'm not even joking. I got goosebumps because it's the exact same story. Yeah. I just have the one. I think it's, it's going to be I don't know. It must be the same with everybody, right? I mean, I, I don't think anybody goes, well, I guess there are some times when you just say, fuck, fuck drinking. I'm, I'm fuck, you know, being, uh, you know, abstaining or sober. I'm just going to drink and binge. Maybe sometimes that happens, but I think mostly it's the one beer, the two beers, the three beers. And within a week, within a week, for me at least, I'm back to full-on drunk every night. Yeah. Can you, this might be hard to answer, but when you stopped drinking with AA Willpower, how did, how did you feel about alcohol during those times? When you weren't drinking? When I was drinking or wasn't drinking? When I stopped, tried to stop. Yeah, when, when you stopped drinking, so let me, I'll ask you one more time. So... So when you stop drinking with AA or willpower, so you so you you know you'd you'd hit a down place. You'd be like, I'm stopping. I'm, I'll find something. I'll do something. During the time before it led up to the relapse, like let's say you went a month, how did you feel about alcohol during that month of, of not drinking? I missed my best friend. I missed him. I missed my scotch. Um, I I was pissed off at myself. I, I was pissed off at the world that. I couldn't just be a normal freaking drinker. I just wanted to drink and have a beer. I wanted to go to the restaurant and have a beer. I wanted to go to a party and have some wine. And I would, I was mad. I was mad that I didn't seem to have that capability and I, I missed it. And, um, it, and, and because I missed it and because I wanted to be that person that could just drink normally, quote unquote, I, um, I, I, it was always calling to me, you know? Oh yeah, man. Yeah. I remember exact same, exact same. Yeah. So what, so, so, so leading up to more of the present day, what was it that made you decide to say, I want to try Leon's program. I want to try sober clear program, change my perception. Um, I was visiting my brother, um, like the summer before that, I think, I think I joined you guys somewhere around December or November or something like that. The summer before that, um, well, I, when did I join? I guess five minutes. What, what is five minutes from here? It's, it's anyway. five minutes ago. So is it, uh, it, it was like beginning of October. Okay. So the summer before that, I was with my brother and my brother's a big drinker too. And we we're both big drinkers and, uh, we're having a good time, but we got to talking and I, I told him, I said, look, dude, and we, we both want to quit. You know, he wants to quit. Um, I told him I've decided to quit drinking. I haven't decided to pull the trigger yet, but I have decided I'm going to do it. <clears throat> So I just knew at that point, at that point, that decision was already made. Now, actually pulling the trigger on it was the next step, but I felt very secure in my knowledge that, yes, I had decided to quit drinking. I was going to do it. The how, the when, or the circumstances was still to be worked out. Um, you know, I saw your videos. I watched a few of them. Um, like I said before, I, I'm always trying to figure out because I, I, I don't usually try to quit when I'm, you know, you, you know, you got like high, bo high bottoms and low bottoms and, 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 um, AA, you, you've heard of those terms. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like high bottoms are, are functional people. They carry on with their lives. They're not down in the gutter or homeless or anything like that. And you got the low bottoms are just, you know, have lost everything. And they're, they're so low. They're like, I got to quit. You know, I, I never really quit when I was at a low place. I've always been high. I've always been functional. Always taken charge of my life for the most part. Um, except for this little thing. Um, but I've never been, I've never been a guy that goes to a very low point and then says, I got to quit. When I'm at a low point, that's when I drink more. I have to get to a point where I think it's possible. So I was trying to get to that point. <clears throat> and uh, I came home and I, you know, I had that in my mind. I watched some of your videos. I really liked your videos. I, this world is, is lacking you know, I want to say something about your program, and I'll tell you what. This is why I joined. The only thing out there that I guess most people know about quitting drinking is AA. And what does AA tell you? You have no willpower. You have a disease. You're going to be an alcoholic for the rest of your life. And by the way, let's count every minute, second, hour, and day, and week, and month of how of how long you've stopped drinking to remind you that you're an alcoholic because if you start drinking again you're going to start drinking again because you know it's out of your control it's a disease i i hated that i i just like how is that helping anybody and i think that i guess those people the low bottoms the guys who really get down in the gutter and they've lost everything sure maybe that'll help them surrender to god do that but i think most people High-functioning alcoholics, and I think this is the kind of people that you attract, um, are not, haven't lost control of their lives completely. You know, they still manage their lives. They're, they're still functional. They, they do what they got to do. And when I was watching your videos, I saw something in them that this guy, he's like, I saw that you believed alcoholism, alcoholism drinking, I just said drinking. Is a choice. It's a freaking choice. It's not a freaking disease. It's a choice that everybody makes. They choose to do it or they choose not to do it. Or if they're a normal drinker, they can choose to do it in moderation and it's not a big deal. And I and it really hit home with me that this guy understands how I think a little bit. Because um, I always knew it was a choice. So... I stopped, I, at some point while I was watching your videos, I stopped drinking. And then I kept, you know, at, like the next day I was watching your interviews again, I, I said, you know, I don't know how much this thing costs, but I've tried everything else, not everything else, but I've tried a lot of things. And, uh, and I actually thought that me putting down some money, I didn't know how much it cost at that point. Me putting down some money would help me be motivated to do that. And it did. But that's not really the, the main part of it. Um, so, yeah, I called you the next day. We talked and we did it. Yeah, so you, you were, you were in a place. The motivation was there. You knew you wanted to change. You were 100% sure on that. And then you'd resonate with the videos and then it was like, You'd actually already stopped by watching the videos, but then it was like, nah, I need to go to the next level. Yeah, I, I mean, I figured there was something, you know, if, if, if you're using your videos to sell your program, which you are, which is fine. Um, I knew there had to be a little bit something more. And I wanted that little bit something more. I wanted to see, I wasn't about to just pass it off and not know. Um, if, I, if I had not called you, I wouldn't know. Um, I wouldn't know what I know now. I think probably you do cover most aspects of, of things in, in short segments in your videos, but having it put all together in a, in a logical kind of way that you can kind of just go through it and you can kind of go back and repeat and, and, and think about it. It's basically, it's, it's a process of thinking through. It's not even a process of you telling us anything. It's a process of us hearing your viewpoints, hearing your, hearing what you have to say, 
and then thinking about that in the context of our own lives and then seeing if what you're saying really like I, I, I wrote a review for you and I, it's kind of like a self-realization process or a society realization process, really kind of those combined. You kind of realize what society and what yourself has been doing for the last 30 years. And, uh, and once I realized one little thing there, uh, quitting was very easy. So I had quit. I didn't really get to the point where everything clicked until... I don't know. Pro- I think you have five weeks of the initial. Is it five weeks? Uh, yeah, like four, yeah, four. Four. Okay. So it was like on the fourth week where it really clicked for me. Um, up until that time, you know, I'm I'm abstaining. I'm going, sticking with the program. But it really didn't become, you know, didn't click. It didn't become a piece of cake until I finally realized what I needed to realize. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Did I answer your question? <laughs> what was yeah, the yeah, question? yeah. Perfect. No, it's perfect. So how would you say it's different than, because you did watch the YouTube videos and you did stop with the videos. How would you say it's different to just watching the videos? The, for me, from my point of view, your videos are advertisements for your program. And I know that, that they are helpful. And I know that they are helpful to people to kind of get a different viewpoint. Um, but as I looked at him, I was like, okay, he's, he's got something going on here, but I'm only getting like little, you know, sound bites of, of this thing. I want to know the whole thing. So, so I, that's what I decided. I said, I'm going to, I want to know the whole thing. I don't want to get this in a, in a little bit of sound bites here and a sound bites there. I want to fully understand what this guy's all about. I want to fully understand what he's saying. And so that's why I decided to do it. Um, everything else I had thought about or, or done wasn't good enough, I guess, you know, at least in my mind, to, to get me to that point. Um, and, you know, honestly, dude, your program is so freaking simple. Like you shell out that money and uh, you go through that program and you're like, man, this is really simple. He sits in front of a video. He talks about something for 15, 20, 25 minutes. And then you go on and you watch another video. And it seems so freaking simple. It's I, it, You kind of get that thing, did I pay for this? But I don't think you really understand the power of it until you actually watch these things, take your time, and think about it. Because it is simple. It is freaking simple. Um, you you can't really say much more than what you say there, because it's when you when it finally becomes obvious to you, which it did. Like all this stuff that you were talking about, it's like it's fucking obvious. It's obvious. Um, mm-hmm. You get to that point, and you're like, oh. Well, it, you, he can't make it any more complex than it already is. It is, it is a very simple, straightforward, logical program. And uh, you put it together in a way that kind of just very easy to, to uh, what's the word, comprehend or take in, I guess. is I don't know what the right word is. Mm. So then now that, now that you've gone through it, mm-hmm. what's it been like over the past five months not drinking? Yeah. Compared to previous attempts, how, how how would you say you feel different? When it comes to drinking, I don't I don't even want to drink. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't. You know, um, I, I will tell you that this is the one thing I learned. Um, this was the thing that clicked for me, and this is what made it so simple. Um, after, like I said before, whenever I stopped drinking, I missed it, and I always wanted. To be a non, I always wanted to be a normal drinker. I just wanted, I wanted to be able to. I loved my freaking scotch. I loved my beer with Mexican tacos, and I, I liked my wine with a nice dinner. I loved it. I still love it. I mean, if I drink right now, I would love it. But the one thing that finally clicked with me, and and I think you talk about this a little bit, 
but I don't, I don't know if you go in. Yeah, you do talk about this. I finally realized that I don't need to want to be a normal drinker. I just don't need to want to do that. Once I fi- figured out I didn't need to, I don't need to want to be a normal drinker. Done. It was done. So I don't, I don't even think about drinking. I have been out a few times with people that are drinking. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I don't need to be one of those drinkers. It's just, that's what clicked with me. That was the thing that always got me back in. I wanted to be a normal fucking drinker and I wanted to be just like everybody else. And I was pissed off about it. And I, and I resented it. I resented that I was not capable of that. But now that I know that I don't need to want that, I don't do it. Nice, man. So good. So let's talk about your life over the past five months then. So now that you're in the state of mind, now that the, it's, it's like the problem solved, what's been happening over the past five months for you? Well, that doesn't solve all your problems. Um, <laughs> no, it, it certainly does. I, I have not been drinking, which is great. But everything else in my life is not perfect either. I got fired month, last month. My girlfriend left me. You know, I still got to live this life. Um, so stopping drinking doesn't solve everything. I, and I, like I said, I've always been very high functioning. I know I could do a little bit more. If I had stopped, I knew that it was ruining my health. I knew all these things. But I don't think drinking was ever something that really stopped me from, you know, living my life. But, and, and stopping drinking, at least for me, didn't cure everything. You know, I am, I'm keeping the weight off now. So that's good. A lot less calories. Um, I still have whatever, whatever issues I still have, I still have them. Um, and I got to work through those. I think it's a little bit easier to work through those now. But stopping drinking does not fix everything. But I'll tell you what, what it has done for me, it's it's just given me a little bit more clarity. And it's given me a little bit more time. Um, coming home from work and drinking yourself to sleep every night uh, is a lot of time wasted. So I do have more time now. And I do have more clarity. And I am healthier. And I'm... I am working on things that I would never have worked on before. I I mean, this program in and of itself is, has made me think about a lot of things that, that I would like to maybe share or work with on people as well. So, um, and I don't think it's because I stopped drinking. It's because I have a new mindset. I have a new way of seeing things. And I, I would love people to... I would love people to become more familiar with your program. I think your program fills a niche that has been widely ignored for the last, I don't know, 50 years. Um, I, honestly, I don't know of any other empowering program that basically empowers you. Says you, dude, you are a person. Here are the facts. Make your decision. Decide if you want to be a drunk. Decide if you want, don't want to be a drunk, but know this. Um, and I think people like like me, I think people who have the money for your program are people that have, you know, they take charge of, lives, of their lives for the most part. They're taking their charge of their lives for, you know, to, to join your program. They're making a decision to, to try this. And um, I think that People who are used to ch- taking charge of their lives or are used to being active in, in the direction of their lives, they don't want to go and sit in a room with a bunch of people who are all, you know, mopey and I'm an alcoholic and I, it's been three hours since my last drink. They want to take charge. You give them the information that they can use to take charge, to make that decision. There's nothing the magic about your program. It's just a, it just shows... Some here's some facts and another way of thinking about it. If you're a smart person, you might want to consider this. So that's how I see it. So, so just going, I appreciate that. And I, and I love you for saying it, but just going back to the original question. So 
I thought that was the question. It's all good. But um, what was the you, question? You, you, you said, yeah, you said something um, that you said that when you stop drinking, and I really appreciate you saying that because it wouldn't, the easy answer is, yeah, I lost some weight. I'm sleeping better. I feel better. But you, you, obviously those things are going to happen, but we all know that. But you're saying that you stopped drinking and it, it, it wasn't like a magic pill. Nothing, nothing, you know, you still had all these issues, all these things you had to deal with. Uh, and it, and that is a fact. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. But then you can well, deal with them. Yeah, exactly. I think I, I can deal with these things a little bit better now. Um, I'm not surrendering, I guess, uh, to, you know, surrendering, sur surrendering all my evenings to sit in front of the TV watching your YouTube as I drink my scotch, you know. Um, but uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think here's what I think. If alcohol is holding you back, which it, I think it holds everybody back, to what extent I think will vary uh, from person to person. But if alcohol is holding you back and you can't seem to stop it from holding you back, if you can't be a normal drinker, I guess I would say, you're only going to make your circumstances better if you get rid of the thing that's holding you back, even if it's just this much or if it's this much. So... I think alcohol is holding it, 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 you know, I raised a family. I, I'm a professional. I make money. Well, not right now. I got to find a new job. But, um, but it's never held me back in that respect. It's held me back in, in, in a lot of little things. And I think now I can kind of start concentrating on those little things. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So... Um, you said you're working on some new things. Do, do you want to talk about that? Well, you always talk about in your videos and, you know, what are you going to do once you get rid of alcohol? I'll tell you, one of the things I would like to do, and I, I, I'm still thinking it through. Well, let me tell you about my brother. So my brother is a little bit younger than me. He he would love to stop drinking too. I think, but it's, it's got a real good hold on him and he hasn't come to the point in his mind where that decision of I'm going to quit has taken place. I mean, sure. He'd love to quit, but it hasn't gotten there yet. And I don't know how to get it there. And I don't know how you can make anybody get it there. But I think one of the biggest things that I came out of, of your of your program is drinking is a decision it's just a decision everybody makes and you can decide to keep drinking or you can decide to stop drinking or you can decide not to decide and just cruise through life mm -hmm. so it really it was really profound to me that the first part of stopping drinking is the decision to stop drinking and you have to be able to come to that decision with enough knowledge and I guess, I don't know, commitment. I don't know what the word is. You have to be able to come to that decision. Like I said, I, I decided to quit drinking a lot of the time. I only actually did quit drinking when I had some sort of, when I had a better understanding of what, of what this drinking thing whole, all was. So with that information, I was able to make that decision and, and, and make it a, a lasting one. So, I kind of wanted to talk to people about the decision-making process. I kind of, you know, I got this little boom here. Um, I got a little mic here. I've got my living room set up here to do interviews. I, what my plan is, I, I would like to talk to people about the decision-making process. I would like to ask them, you know, you know, how did you get here? Where would you like to be? You know, what kind of decisions got you here? What kind of decisions could get you to the place that you want to be? And kind of not really talk about all success stories because there's very, you know, the big picture, there's there's a lot more unsuccess stories than success stories. But I think it would be interesting to talk to people about how they got to where they are and where they want to go through the decisions that they've made. Because our whole lives are just based on, you know, the various decisions with, with, that we've made. And a lot of lives are based on making no decision at all. And I think 
to me, that is the crux of understanding and making a change. Because a lot of people just can't or won't or refuse to make any decision whatsoever. So I, I, I have a little setup where I, I want to interview people, just normal people, success stories, non-success stories. I've done a couple of them already. Uh, my daughter's ha- helping me edit them. Um, I think they'll turn out pretty good. I'm still learning a lot, though. So that's what that's my new project. I have plenty of time right now. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Um, well, going back to the, the topic of decisions, if you've mm-hmm. got somebody that's watching this video and they're like, they're on the fence, right? They're, they're, they're toying with the decision. They think they might pull the trigger. They're, they're thinking of doing the program. They've been watching the videos. What's one piece of advice that you'd give to them to help them make the decision to, to book a phone call, to see if the program's good for them? Dude, if I had that piece of advice, I would tell that to my brother right now and make him make that decision. I don't know, quite frankly. I think everybody has to come to it. I think I think the one piece of advice that I would say is to just make the decision, whatever the hell the decision is. Just know that you're sitting here right now and you're deciding to go this way or that way. I think a lot of people... A lot of people's problem, I mean, you know, like that Rush song, you know, if you choose not to decide, you still made a choice. A lot of people can't or won't or fear, I guess, making a decision that's going to put them on a path one way or the other. Once, you've, once you're on that path, you're no longer on this path, right? And so that, I think it's a, a fear of missing out. I think it's a fear of making the wrong decision. There's a lot of reasons why people can't or won't make decisions. I think making the choice to make that decision is the number one thing. If you can't get to that point, you're you're just going to be floating down this road with the waves, with the with the current, and the decisions will all be made for you. So you have to come to the point to make that decision. Period. Do it. 